All right, so we've ported the Epic Core Customization Tool um, to Visual Studio 2017. Um, it should also work with 2019 when that comes out, but for the time being, 2017 is only one supported, both professional and community edition. So I'm going to walk you through how to use it uh, in Visual Studio. It's fairly similar um, to how you would use it in Visual Studio Code, but nevertheless, um, I'll do a quick demo. So in Visual Studio, you're going to open up Visual Studio and you're going to go to Extensions and Updates. And you're going to go online and you're going to search for Epic Core. And that should bring up the Epic Core Customization Editor for Visual Studio. Uh, simply click Download. It's going to tell you that changes need to be made after you close Visual Studio. So just go ahead and close out of it. And it should pop up in a second here. Uh, with the installation. There it is. All right, so once the installation is completed, that's really all that it takes. You still have to go and download the um, libraries from uh, the download page, and I will show you that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and click Modify and let it uh, install what it needs to do. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to just Google over here. And search for Visual Studio Extensions Marketplace. And in here, if you type Epic Core, it should come up. Make sure it's Visual Studio and not Visual Studio Code and click into it, uh, you'll see this page, and here is where you would download the libraries that are for each version of Epic Core. That hasn't changed. All right, so our installation is completed here. We're gonna hit close, and we're gonna launch Visual Studio again. Um, sorry, it's launching on the wrong screen, but just keep bear with me for a second. So you're gonna download the DLLs just like you did before. You're gonna extract them into your Epic Core folder just like you did before. Um, all right, so here we are. So we're in Visual Studio. So now, how do we use this? Um, so the first thing we need to do is go to View, Other Windows, and Epic Core TW. This is going to change. It probably changed to a better name. I was doing some testing here. But Epic Core TW uh, will bring up this panel. Now, it'll probably be hovering somewhere, not actually attached. But this is what it looks like. I recommend you attach it somewhere so that it's not just in your way. So I like to put mine down here. The first thing you're going to have to do is go to Settings and fill these out. They're the same settings as before. You need to point it to your Epic or Client folder. You need to point it to your app to download folder where you would like the customizations downloaded to. And if you want to, you can provide a DNSPY location. Once you've done that, it functions exactly the same as the other one. You have Open, Upload, Download, and Toolbox. Open is the uh, one that lets you open a customization for modification. You're gonna go ahead and hit Login on that and select your customization just like we did before. Okay, we're going to select customization and find one that we would like to modify. So I'm just going to just pick a random one here. Oh, let's do my trusty ABC one. And a second there, Visual Studio will kick in and load our project for us. And there we go. We now have our script with all our code in it just like before. And now, again, we can use the, the toolbox to make changes and upload them and things like that. So uh, I got these icons flipped up, so I'll have to fix that. But uh, upload lets you make changes here and upload into Epic Core. Download refreshes the project. And the toolbox is the most used one, and that contains all the other goodies. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, invoke our toolbox here and, and go through some of that. Okay, so there's our toolbox. As before, everything works exactly the same. It is actually the exact same pro program. Nothing has changed here. So you have tracing, data dictionary, extended properties, BAQ entry maintenance. You can run debug and test your customization as well as uh, do some of the code wizard stuff like data tools and reference manager. All right, so I think that's it. So for example, you can go into extended properties 
click on that and that will launch the extended property tool menu within Epicor and then download those changes back into your project. Um, there are still some little bit of bugs I got to work out with the Visual Studio interface uh, specifically um, as it relates to um, refreshing the screen. So for example, if I go into the code wizard here, you see that it went into edit mode and it's telling you do not make any changes in, in Visual Studio until you're done uh, within Epicor. So that's kind of helpful because if you change things here while while the, the Epicor uh, tools are running, uh, it will get overwritten. So that's just a warning to let you know, hey, don't don't mess with Visual Studio while you're working inside of Epicor. So you can have the toolbox open and work here, but when you're actually working in the Epicor tool set, that's where you have to be careful so you don't get over it. And so I'm gonna simply uh, modify extended properties here. I'm gonna pick uh, ABC code and I'm gonna say company and I'm gonna set that to read only and true. And hit finish there and hit close. So now that's gonna modify our project and update everything. Now a couple of the things that you're gonna see here is you might get this pop up. Um, I'm gonna try and fix this before I push it live, but uh, you simply click no and the project will reload. Um, and now if we go back, so if we go back to the bottom here, we can see that our properties have been set. So there's that. And then our toolbox is still there and we can always go back to it and make some more changes uh, and keep going that way. All right, so that's the extent of this brief demo. Um, it works the same as before. So let me know what you think. Thanks.